Let's analyze the dimensions of a unit cell. So here are some things you should know first of all. These are basically the relations between the sides or edges of the unit cells in relation to the radii of the individual atoms that you're looking at. So here's for simple cubic, A equals 2R. For body centered, 4R equals A root 3. And for the face centered, you're going to have 4R equals root 2 times A. Now let's start with an example problem. So copper is a face centered cubic crystal structure. So it's face centered. Assume that it has an atomic radius of 128 picometers for a carbon atom. So first of all, we want to find the length of the unit cell of copper. So we are given the radii. So that's 128 picometers. We can transfer that into terms of centimeters, since that's more convenient for a lot of people, and basically do that. With the face centered, we're going to have 4R equals radical 2A. And with some algebra, we can find out A by switching the variables around. And we're given R. 4 is given and radical 2 is given, so plug and chug. A equals 3.62 times 10 to the negative eighth power centimeters. Next, we want to find the volume of the unit cell. So if we want to think about a unit cell, it's basically just a cubic structure, right? So for a unit cell, it's basically the volume of a cube, which is going to be the side or edge cubed. And because we already know the edge, we calculated there, we can just cube that, and it comes out to our volume, 4.75 times 10 to the negative 23rd centimeters cubed. Now notice that I converted that picometer unit to centimeter unit earlier, so then I could just cube it without transferring the cubic picometer unit to the uh, cubic centimeter unit. Part C, how many atoms belong to a unit cell? So basically, this is something that should have been done already in your class. Um, basically, we have in a face-centered cubic, six face atoms. So that's going to be one half of an atom for each one. And we have eight corner atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and each one will have eighth of an atom. So it's going to equal out to three plus one, or four net atoms in a copper unit cell. Next, we want to find the percentage of volume of unit cell occupied. Now, that's going to be represented by FV. So we want to find the volume occupied or the volume of the unit cell. And we already calculated the volume of the unit cell, A cubed, earlier. Now, for the volume occupied, it's basically the number of atoms times the volume of a sphere, since I suppose atoms are best represented by spheres. So, again, plug and chug. The number of net atoms, as we calculated earlier, was 4. So 4 it is. Uh, 4 over 3 pi, and then it's radius cubed. Now, we were given the radius, and then we changed that into centimeters. So that's how it is. But remember that it should be cubed. The radius should be cubed. And this is over our volume of the unit cell, which we calculated earlier. And again, plug and chug. The percentage of volume occupied would be around 74%. Now, party, mass of the unit cell of copper. Note that it does not say mass of a single atom of copper, and there's a very big difference. Because the mass of a single atom of copper would be basically the molar mass, shown in a periodic table or anywhere, over Avogadro's number, so that's the number of atoms per mole, that's a quantity. And from that you can basically figure out the mass of the copper atom. Plug and chug. But remember, this is just the mass of one atom of copper, not an entire unit cell, which consists of four copper atoms. So the mass of the unit cell, four net atoms, which we calculated earlier, and the mass of any single atom of copper. Again, plug, chug. 
finally, F, density, density of the unit cell. So density is mass over volume. So mass of the unit cell over volume of the unit cell. We calculated mass of the unit cell and the volume of the unit cell earlier. So plug and chug, the end. Remember, of course, significant figures. And those are basically how you analyze the dimensions of a unit cell.